As with most applications, InDesign comes with a set of preferences that control not only how it looks, but how it also behaves for certain aspects. Now, this is a big difference between the Mac and the PC because preferences is found underneath the edit menu on a PC down towards the bottom. On a Mac, I have to go to the InDesign menu and then hover over preferences, which reveals a sub list. Now from here on in, the experience on the both platforms is exactly the same. So I'm going to go across and click on interface first. We're given a list of categories on the left hand side, click on a category. The options are shown on the right hand side of the dialog box. Now, the first one I've come to an in interface here is because these options at the top are well, really down to a personal preference. You can change the brightness of the interface by clicking on one of the four themes. When you click on one of them, it will change it instantly. So you can preview what that looks like. So if you're finding that your eyes are getting a little bit tired after sat in front of InDesign for goodness knows how many hours in a day, try changing one of these interface options in here. It might help. Personally, I prefer working in the default mode of medium dark because I like how the pages stand out prominently from the application. However, when I'm teaching in these videos, I prefer to use the lighter interface to increase the contrast between my cursor and the application. I'll head down to type. And from here, I'm going to turn on the checkbox for use typographers quotes, because we definitely don't want to be using those horrible um, smart quotes that look like an inch symbol. I'll then click on units and increments in here. I'm going to make sure that the units are set to millimeters. I think if we're going to try and visualize what something looks like when it's printed out here on a desktop computer, measuring a millimeters for me is more helpful. However, if you wish to change that, you can get in design to measure the width and height of anything that's active from any one of these measurements in here. Down at the bottom, well, keyboard increments simply allows you to do the following swipe over a numerical field and then use the cursor keys on the keyboard to tap the cursor keys up or down to increase or decrease the value. It's a very quick way of being able to edit especially changing the size of text and the point size. Now, in terms of these options, I set these all to be one point. And then here for kerning and tracking, I'll change that to one Pica M. It will give you a level of control that you'll need for your layouts across the dictionary. And then of course, set the dictionary language at the top for the audience that you are creating your documents for. And that will also define the spell checker as well. Under spelling, it is quite handy to turn on enable dynamic spelling that will underline words in red that are misspelt and repeated uncapitalized words and sentences will also be highlighted in green. That will allow you to plant your type tool into a word, right click and correct that issue. If you spell a word incorrectly on a regular basis, well, then you can go down and click and add that word by typing the way that you spell it incorrectly first and then the correct way of spelling it. When you're typing away inside of InDesign, once you hit the space bar and InDesign knows that's the end of the word, if it needs to, it will auto correct for you. I'm going to click cancel for now. And for now I'll head down to file handling and turn on the option down here, which is called hide new layers when updating or relinking that relates specifically to graphics, either photographic content from Adobe Photoshop or layered content from Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to talk more about that in a later chapter. And finally, I'll click on auto activate Adobe fonts only available in the latest version of InDesign, which is the 2021 version I'm working in here. And it will essentially, when you open up an InDesign document, detect if it uses any Adobe fonts and it will automatically install them for you. So Adobe fonts is an online catalog of over 12,000 fonts that you can synchronize with your creative cloud account and utilize them in your publications. And then I'll click OK. Most of those options will be changed and activated now. It doesn't save them, however. So it is worthwhile once you have set your preferences to go to either the file menu and choose quit on a PC or in my case, InDesign and quit InDesign. InDesign will then close down and save preferences so that if you do have a crash and it does happen, um, you won't lose all those preference options and have to go back and reapply them in there. But those are preferences.